<laughs> oh, welcome back, Joe. Good to see you again. You, you don't, you don't agree. Oh, it's good to see you. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, I guess it is still morning. So good morning. Um, I'll take your questions. I'm, I'm sure you have a injury questions to ask, and we can get started there if you want. Just let me know. Well, tell me the questions you have. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So AJ AJ came up. Um, Balin's in the 21 day window. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes and how he progresses through. And um, what else? Yeah. So uh, they will all go today uh, from a walkthrough standpoint. Uh, Dane will be the only one that is not. Dane Jackson is the only one that is not going to go today. Uh, foot. Yes. And would he still be out there on the basis, though? In the uh, in the protocol. Gotcha. Yep. Yes. Well, like I've said before multiple times, you never replace a player, um, and I don't like to get into comparing players. I don't think that's healthy. Overall, um, it's it's the job of the person who is stepping in to, to do the job, and uh, and we have full confidence in that player, whoever that player is in this case. And I mean, a piece of this is you you play. You know, those guys can't. They're not able to play. You know, the guys that you know you're all you know talking about, and so piece of it is playing for those guys too because you know they were a big piece of this team and and still are but they can't you know help it so much now so so we play for them. John to the point of the guys who come in now you know with Trey you had corners who had played on this team a lot but at defensive tackle you got guys that have been in this league for a long time at linebacker the guys who came in have much less experience how much different is the approach with those guys coming in because of, of that background they have? Uh, the approach at the position mean or just overall or? At, at linebacker, <coughs> the guys are likely going to play now for math because they don't have the same experience. The guys who right. replace Trey and Saquon. Yeah, I mean, you always have to be, you always have to be, to your point, that aware of, of what you have there in terms of experience, rapport with, with that position in particular where, I mean, really any position. Hey, how long has the player been on the field? How long has he been working with the player next to him? Um, and so you just try and be as aware as you can um, at the position level, the coordinator level, the, and, and the, the head coach level. So, um, but full confidence in those players. Yeah, Sean, I'm sure that Kunis was an injury that's been inactive. But at this point now, with Jake Monroe, do you kind of have to step up and, and you know, show you something here? Right, and, and, and he's, done, he's, done, he's done well. Um, it's just it was more of a numbers thing the first couple of weeks when he was down, when he was inactive. Um, and so, but he's he's a really good football player, um, and um, you know he's helped us when he was active, and, and now it's his ch his chance to get in there and, and do it again. Well, I think it was said uh, before he before he got hurt. You know, the, I think the I think the previous two weeks he had had were were very strong. He was factoring into. Um, the defense, the, the defensive front um, overall, run and pass, and um, I think he was playing really well. So, um, you know, you lose a good football player, uh, but as I said before, you, you, you look and you say, hey, all right, come on, let's go. Next person, you're up. It's, it's your time to shine here. Yeah, that report, the rapport, right? So the rapport that I mentioned earlier is similar up front. When you got a guy, a guy playing next to Ed, who Ed knows, and 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 in this in this case, Daquan knows Ed, and and so you kind of, you know, work off of each other a little bit, both run and pass, and and so. But that said, you know, uh, Jordan Phillips has been here a long time, and uh, maybe two different stints, but he's been here uh, for quite some time, and he knows Ed, and and, and so does Tim, and so does Puna, for that matter. I don't. 
Um, all I know is they're going to be put on IR. Um, uh, they're going through surgery or have gone through surgery already, and, and uh, but that's really where where I'm at at this point. Um, y yes, um, I, I don't think that that door has been shut totally, um, but again, more information needed to, to really to be able to say that. Um, I'll say both. Yeah, very active. Um, I mean, this is one of the conversations that we were having every day, I think, at the start of the season, right, when um, there was a lot of questions about TB and <clears throat> in that position overall. And, um, you know, I'll say that I think he's done a real nice job early on in, this, in the start of the season at this point of, um, you know, making the plays that he's needed to make and then making some that are above and beyond, you know, the job description. And, um, and then also at the same time is the leadership piece that goes with that position is, is inherent to the position. And, and he's continued every day to, to work on that piece. And um, he's only going to get better with experience. Could you process a lot of things besides the break going to his home? Could you give him a lot of other information? Um, you know what? Uh, I try not to just because, you know, it'd be you're trying to write an article and someone's in your ear yelling at you. I don't think that's probably the best work environment maybe for you. Yelling at you mean trying to give you more information. It's just, and then you got to go. Um, so it's, I'd like to, and I think most play callers or, or communicators would. Hey, I, let me, this is what I think's coming, but um, over the course of time, it's been proven just to get in the way as opposed to helping. <laughs> Right. Um, you know, Bobby's done a phenomenal job. He really has. We've been together for a number of years. Um, you know, our families are close, and, and uh, he's, he's a really good coach. He really is and, and uh, works extremely hard. Um, you know, has a passion for the job. Um, you remember his dad when his dad was here, and he learned from, I think, growing up in a football family, much like I did. And, and, um, and so he's just had a great foundation, and, and um, you know, he's done a great job at the position. Would, well, they're, they're, I think they're a good, solid football team. You know, I mean, they've had some injuries, and um, when you look at them last season, they went in one, one in the wild card round out, out in Minnesota, I believe it was, and um, you know, they're a good football team. They've got you know, good schemes, uh, good coaches, and and um, you know, you know, we got a test in front of us on Sunday night. We got to get our, we got to focus on ourselves, number one, and get ourselves ready to go, and um, you know, look at some of this personnel that we've got going in there, and and uh, get better fundamentally, get better technique-wise, and it um, should be an exciting night uh, in Western New York here and on Sunday night here. Sean, recognizing that the offense is playing well in the rest of the country, do you feel you need more production from the tight end position? It just doesn't seem like as much as you tight end as you're using, I know they're going one ball, but do you, do you need more out of those two guys? Well, I just think overall it's a combination of finding a rhythm offensively, right, including getting the ball to the tight end position and but really, you know, all positions, right, is, is, uh, is I think the biggest, uh, my biggest goal at this point is consistent rhythm um, from the start of the game to the end of the game. And then, and it's tough. I mean, every, people play good defense. This is the NFL for a reason. So it's not going to be easy. Um, and sometimes you want to get the ball to somebody and, and the defense takes it away, right? But the defense they're playing or, or how they match up. But at the end of the day, uh, we got to find a more consistent approach or a more consistent um, level of rhythm and, and I think including the tight ends in that is important and um, but also um, making sure we're we're balanced from a standpoint of um, it's not just hey the tight end position it's where the ball where the progression takes you that's where you're going with it and Josh I think has done a good job to this point and and um, we got to get the ball in the playmakers hands yeah Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, as you would imagine, you know, you, you, you go through a certain um, career, right, and you're used to being, you go from kind of earning your way to having earned your way as a starter for a number of years in the league, and then 
towards the back end now where, where AJ is, um, you know, he still loves to play. He still is fit to play and um, he's a really smart football player and um, a guy we have a lot of confidence in. And there is a mental adjustment, if you will, I guess that's the right word, um, for all that go through those phases, right? And um, But it's not just specific to football. It's specific to really life and, and any career. So, But he's been really mentally strong and, and helping the young guys. How is Josh doing Yeah, similar. Um, you know, we'll see. I haven't, you know, I just saw Jay No in, in, uh, in street clothes here, so I haven't been on the field with him yet. Um, but another guy that still has the passion and desire to play, obviously, and, and um, you know, we'll see what type of shape he's in here. And um, he's a guy that's always brought a lot of juice, you know, a lot of energy to the, to the team that, and teams that he's been on. And, um, you know, he does a great job taking the ball away and, um, and, he's a, and he's a sound tackler, so um, you know we'll see where it goes physically at this point from here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been through the. You mentioned the arc. It's it's even before that. I mean, he when we were in Carolina, um, you know, he got off to a little bit of a slow start. We got. Off, I say I should say we got off to a little bit of a slow start in terms of just him not being on the field early, and then he. Um, learned some things and 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 adjusted to the way he needed to uh, adapt his style of play to the to the team and and um, and the rest is history. I mean, he went and did well and above any you know any you know what we thought he was capable of because of what he the work he put in. I mean, he was um, so committed to his craft and and uh, but the credit goes to him just from the adjustments he made early on because he wasn't on the field early on. And those are great lessons he can share with, with young players. Sean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a you know, to me a not the reason the, the primary reason why why Jano is here, but it is a, a secondary reason that he can, you know, impart wisdom, perspective, um, that sometimes can't always come from a coach, it's it's powerful when it comes from a teammate or, or a player that's played your position and been there and done that before. So what's the biggest challenge to you as a defensive coordinator when you have such critical pieces that take an action out of your personnel? What's the biggest challenge you have yeah. to Well, I, I think overall, you know, when you, you talk about, I know that, you know, the baseball series, playoff series are going on right now, and, you, and, I, and I've never been a baseball coach. Um, but when you have a starting rotation and you're about six, seven deep, you got options, right? And so you get to a point where you're saying, hey, you know, I'm now down to three or four maybe, right? And you're saying, hey, so the options are take some of the options are taken off the table. I think that's probably the thing that comes to mind the most. So when you see Jordan Williams fly around the way he did, <coughs> in there, maybe just a little over pursuit here, a little angle there, a little tackling thing there. It's got to get you excited, I'm sure, to see that. But how do you rein that in a little bit to let him play with that energy and kind of make sure that he also is using the right technique? Right, that's a that's an ongoing, daily conversation with everyone on the team. Is fundamentals and techniques. You got to stay with it. You got to grow it to 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 the point where it becomes sustainable through the rest of the season. Because there's a point where you're out of pads, um, where you, it's hard to work it as much as you'd like to. That's why that training camp, spring training camp, early part of the season is so important to that building that foundation. Um, and you're talking about a young player, right? And so when you get in there, watching it from the sideline is one thing. Getting in there and watching it unfold right in front of you, the speed is, you know, these older guys tell these young guys, hey, pre you go from college to high school, or high school to college, it gets faster. College to the pros, it gets faster preseason. And then the regular season's faster. And then playoffs and beyond, it gets, it only gets faster as you go. So you got to find a way, certainly from experience, to slow the game down as, as much as you can. <clears throat> Right. I mean, he's a mature young man, um, knows what he wants, works extremely hard at his craft. And, um, you know, a little bit to your point, he did gather some reps through the spring and through training camp, but has been a little bit banged up. And so um, more soft tissue, I'd say. So it's just been harder for him to <clears throat> gather more reps and, and the experience that comes through uh, through that uh, through those reps. So 
Um, at this point, still a little bit of a team to be decided, yeah. Sean, how do you feel Vaughn did coming through a week of practice in a game, and do you foresee him ramping up his workload now? You know, Vaughn did, Vaughn did well. I thought, you know, number one, he came out of the game clean. Um, and, um, you know, I think, again, any any rep or any game at this point is is um, one under his belt. And, uh, and it's going to take some time. And um, I think the end, at the end of the day, you know, if anybody can come back, um, he can do it. Right. I mean, he's just so committed to his craft and he's such a pro and he finds every little um, inch each week to, to, to establish or find a competitive advantage that he can use to, to help him perform at the highest of the high levels like, like he's done his whole, whole career. So, um, you know, um, I think it's just one step at a time. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like, do you have to worry anything about off and in, in knowledge of your offense um, force you to concerned about that at all? Yeah, I mean, we're aware. I mean, it's, you've, you've, when you have people leave your place or you leave another place, it's, you know, um, that's what happens. You know, good things happen when, you, when you're productive. And, and so he went on to get a head coaching job. And, um, but we, we've coached against coaches before that, uh, we've been around, and so you, you're always aware of it, Mark. I think is the biggest thing, and um, but our focus, uh, respectfully, needs to be on us. All right, thank you.